In this tutorial, uh, let's focus on the superimpose submodule uh, here in the 3D imaging module of Plan Megaromexis software. So superimpose submodule is for comparing two 3D volumes uh, with each other. Uh, so for example, we could have uh, sort of like a before volume of the patient uh, before uh, some surgery uh, that was made uh, to him and then uh, we could uh, take an after volume uh, of the patient after the surgery and then we could here uh, superimpose them on top of each other and we could analyze and measure uh, the changes uh, in the patient's anatomy uh, that happened in the surgery. So uh, we just need uh, two volumes for the patient. Uh, they, don't, they don't need to be of the same size. Uh, they don't need to have the same resolution. Uh, they don't even have to be uh, the same type of uh, 3D data. Uh, so they could be also other 3D data than uh, CBCT. So I have started here uh, by opening uh, the patient's uh, before volume uh, in the volumes list. Uh, so it opens here in the Explorer submodule and now I can click here and I can navigate uh, to Superimpose submodule. And uh, now that I arrive here, uh, the software asks me if I want to do uh, the superimposition uh, by using the fitting tool uh, or if I want to fit those uh, volumes manually. We can later check how we can still uh, adjust uh, the fitting uh, manually. So let's uh, select this uh, fitting tool now. So now uh, the software will open me a dialog uh, where uh, it has placed uh, this before volume uh, automatically uh, on the on the right side of the dialog and uh, here uh, to the left side uh, we can bring uh, the patient's uh, after volume. So we can just click here on select. So uh, we had already imported or captured uh, this after volume for the patient. Uh, so it's in the patient's uh, volume list uh, here in the 3D imaging module. So let's uh, select uh, the right volume and let's click on OK. So now I have my uh, after volume here uh, on the left side and here uh, uh, on, on the side of this uh, dialog I have first some, uh, some buttons uh, uh, that I can use for changing uh, the orientation of, of these uh, volumes naturally. I can just grab them uh, with my mouse as well and I can rotate them around. And uh, then uh, I have these uh, threshold sliders uh, for both uh, volumes. So I could use these uh, to, to try to uh, remove uh, artifacts, uh, for example, but I need to be careful that I'm not uh, losing uh, the bone uh, surface uh, because uh, we're going to use uh, points uh, selected on the bone surface uh, in order to do the fitting. So here uh, the idea is that uh, we give uh, three common points uh, on both uh, data uh, sets. So like I said, uh, I can manipulate uh, the volumes with my uh, left mouse button and then with my right uh, mouse button I can click and uh, select a point. So I select first uh, one point here with my right mouse button and then uh, I'll select uh, the corresponding point here uh, in the other volume. I'll select another one with my right mouse button here uh, in the after volume and I'll uh, select uh, the same one here uh, in the before volume again with the right mouse button and finally uh, one more point uh, to be selected. So again uh, with right mouse button the, uh, the third one and then uh, I can click on done. And I could by the way I could have used this arrow uh, to go uh, to go back uh, to uh, to remove some of the points and, and place them again uh, when needed. But like I said, I can just click on done and then uh, the software starts calculating uh, at the superimposition based on uh, the points that I gave. And now we get back here um, um, in, in this uh, module and uh, now I can see here in the opposite browser uh, that we have this uh, second a volume here uh, as an object. And I could uh, also uh, remove this superimposition uh, by clicking here and by using the Trascan icon. I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't uh, lose the volume in the volumes list uh, but I would remove uh, this superimposition that I just done. And naturally I could also use this eye icon in order to hide 
this other volume uh, that is superimposed now. So we see this other volume uh, now by default uh, in this uh, brown uh, color uh, here on top of the gray uh, original volume. And uh, we could also uh, change uh, the coloring. So here, if we open this drop down, uh, we could select uh, some other uh, coloring mode uh, for the other uh, volume uh, when needed. And uh, by using this uh, slider here, um, this uh, fourth slider here, I could uh, adjust the threshold uh, of this uh, after volume that is superimposed on, on top of the uh, before. Uh, volume. So I could, for, for example, get rid of the softer tissues and I could better see uh, just uh, uh, the, the bone. And then also here I have a transparency uh, slider so I could change uh, uh, the transparency of this uh, after volume overlay uh, on top of the first one. And then uh, Let's then take a look at how we could adjust uh, the fitting. So we might see here that some anatomies are, are not matching. So uh, uh, that, um, so that we, we, we didn't get a uh, perfect uh, superimposition based on those three points uh, that we gave. Uh, but we can always activate uh, this uh, move uh, rotate volume two. And uh, then uh, in a familiar way uh, with other uh, volume movements. Uh, we could just grab, now that this is active, uh, we could just grab uh, the second volume here on these slice views and we could uh, move that uh, with our left mouse button and we could uh, rotate uh, with our uh, right uh, mouse button. So we could uh, uh, look for the, uh, for the anatomies that uh, we want to match in both volumes. So naturally we need to be careful uh, when uh, looking for the matching anatomies, uh, they need to be some anatomies uh, that uh, still uh, are the same uh, in both uh, volumes. So for example, uh, this uh, spline of the pa patient might, uh, might not be the same uh, depending on how we had uh, captured the image. And uh, in addition to this view, uh, where we can see uh, the volumes uh, on, on top of each other, uh, we also have this other uh, mode here, uh, this side-by-side uh, -side view. So if we open that, uh, we can see here, uh, based on uh, the, the superimposition that we had done uh, in the other view, uh, we can see uh, the slices uh, next to each other. We could activate here also uh, the sagittal and uh, the coronal uh, slices. And if I track here uh, to give more space uh, for the uh, slice views, I can see here that I have always the same uh, slice uh, of this uh, before volume and then also the after volume. And uh, when I browse uh, through the stack, uh, uh, it also uh, browses here in the after volume uh, to the same uh, slice. So I can easily compare here uh, what is the difference uh, between these two volumes. So naturally I could use my uh, annotation tools uh, in order to make measurements and I could always use these snapshot uh, buttons or or use this um, save 2D view here uh, in order to uh, save the findings. Or then I could use uh, also uh, the save view uh, in order to uh, save some view that I would like to go back to uh, later. And uh, all the annotations and uh, uh, saved views and so on. They are uh, uh, they they are related uh, to this uh, specific superimposition. So if I would uh, delete the superimposition here in the object browser, I would also uh, get get rid of the, all the annotations and 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 everything that was related uh, to that superimposition.